What is enlightenment? The Saviour said, The lamp of the body is the mind. As long as these things inside you are set in order, that is the soul, your bodies are enlightened. The word enlightenment is often linked to the age of enlightenment, also known as the age of reason or simply the enlightenment was an intellectual and philosophical movement that dominated the world of ideas in Europe during the 17th and 19th century. However, for Enlightenment thinkers themselves, the Enlightenment is not an historical period, but a process of social, psychological and spiritual development unbound to time or place. There is a natural and spiritual enlightenment. Natural enlightenment is to accept who you are, having good self-esteem. Spiritual enlightenment is very different. It is first self-knowledge, self-examination, and second, a union with the deity, the great uncreated and eternal spirit, and knowledge which illuminates us within and shines out to the world for Christ is all and in all and in Christ we live and move and have our being. In Christianity the word enlightenment is rarely used except to refer to the age of enlightenment and its influence on Christianity. Roughly equivalent terms in Christianity may be repentance, revelation, salvation and conversion. For some um, thinkers in Christianity. Enlightenment and mysticism are equivalent terms for religious or spiritual insight. The word translated as repent, which means a transformation of the mind, is, is translated in Jung's literal translation as reform or reformation. It can also be translated as enlightenment as well as we see in a book called Phanerosis by Dr. John Thomas on page 57. He as the deity exalted to his right hand, a prince and saviour to give enlightenment to Israel and remission of sins, Acts chapter 5 and verse 31. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 2 and verse 32, a light of nations for enlightenment and a glory for thy people Israel. So in Luke chapter 2 and verse 32, the word rendered enlightened or enlightenment is the Greek word for revelation, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. We look at um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6. Because it is God who said, out of darkness light is to shine, who did shine in our hearts for enlightening of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ Jesus. The illuminator of knowledge. For there to be enlightenment or illumination, there has to be an illuminator of knowledge, a revealer, a teacher of righteousness. This person is the Messiah, Jesus. John chapter 8 and verse 12, Therefore Jesus spoke again to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me will by no means walk in darkness, but will possess the light of life. In early Christian documents, Jesus is referred to as the illuminator of knowledge. Odes of Solomon, Ode 36 and verse 3, The Spirit brought me forth before the face of the Lord, and although a son of man, I was named the Illuminator, the Son of God. For you are not the Redeemer nor a helper of strangers. You are an Illuminator and a Redeemer of those who are mine, and now of those who are yours. You shall reveal to them, you shall bring good among them all, the Apocryphon of James. Or the secret book of James. Father, Father of light, who possesses the incorruption, hear us, just as thou hast 
taken pleasure in thy only, only child, Jesus Christ, for he became for us an illuminator in the darkness, ye ere us, the letter of Peter to Philip, the process of enlightenment. We must be transformed in mind and enlightened in art, a purification of mind and body. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Bible says we are saved by the renewing of the Holy Spirit. It also says we are renewed by knowledge. In this, however, it does not contradict itself, but rather makes the one phrase explanatory of the other, as if he had said, we are renewed by the Holy Spirit through knowledge. The Holy Spirit renews or regenerates a person intellectually and morally by putting faith in the truth. Sanctify them by thy truth, says Jesus. Thy word, O Father, is truth. John chapter 17 and verse 17. Ye are clean, said he to his apostles, through the word which I have spoken to you. John chapter 15 and verse 3. God's power is manifest through his agencies. His spirit is his power by which he effects intellectual, moral and physical results. When he wills to produce intellectual and moral effects, it is by knowledge revealed by his spirit through the prophets and apostles. This knowledge becomes power when received into a good and honest art, and because God is the author of it, it is styled the knowledge of God. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 2 or the word of God, James chapter 1 and verse 18, by which he begets sinners to himself as his sons and daughters, the word of truth of the gospel, the gospel of the kingdom, the incorruptible seed, the word, the truth as it is in Jesus, the word of the kingdom, the word of reconciliation, the law and the testimony, the word of faith, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the word of Christ, the word of liberty, etc., are all phrases richly demonstrating the power of God by which he saves his people from their sins and translates them into the hope of the kingdom and glory to which he invites them. The truth is the power that makes men free indeed. John chapter 8 and verse 32 and 36. God is the Father of lights, James chapter 1 and verse 17. Not only is he the giver of the sun for light by day, and the moon and the stars for light by night, Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 35, but he is also the source of all spiritual enlightenment. See 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6. Light is a symbol of intelligence. The understanding faculty in the mind, light is a symbol of wisdom. When Jesus said, I am the light of the world, he meant that he was the expressor of truth in all its aspects. The love of Christ was shown in his cross and through the Spirit's enlightenment we can know the height, length and breadth of that love. Ephesians chapter 3 and verses 18 and 19. Ode 34 and verse 1 to 3. No way is hard where there is a simple art, nor is there any wound where the thoughts are upright, nor is there any storm in the depth of the illuminated thought or mind. Conscience must be enlightened, if not, it can mislead.